In this lesson, we discuss Vray Blend Material. Blend Material simply allows you to layer multiple Vray materials. And by Vray Material, I don't mean Vray MTL per se, but any compatible Vray material like Skin, Fast SSS2, uh, Car Paint, and other material can be used as the inputs for the Vray Blend Material. The way Vray Blend Material works is that you define a base material for it and add other materials on top of it, then use a grayscale map to blend between the code and the base material. Let's open up our material editor. <clears throat> right now I have this simple Vray Material applied to my shader ball object. Let me just copy this material and create a glass material. So dark diffuse color, reflection to something like 200. We can set reflection glassiness to 0.95. Refraction color can be 230. And refraction glassiness maybe to something like 0.95 as our reflection glassiness. And IR of 1.5 would be enough. Now I want to blend these two material. The gray material will be used as our base material and the glass material I want to see it on a, you know, in a floral pattern on top of the base gray material. Let's add a V-Ray blend material from our material browser. Now let's discuss what we have in the blend materials interface. First, we have our base material and here we connect our main material that we want other materials to be layered on top of. Then we have our coat material, so we can specify up to nine materials to be stacked and layered on top of our base material. And finally, we have our blend amount uh, for each coat material. So you can use a grayscale map uh, where the map is black, you can see the base material and where it is white, the coat material will show up. Now let's connect our gray material to the base slot and connect the glass material to coat one slot. Let's open a preview window for our blend material and make it a bit bigger. Right now, because the blend amount is using this medium gray color, we get 50% of our base material and 50% of our glass material. If I set this blend amount color to black, we will only see the base material. And if set to white, only the coat material will be visible. We can override this color with a texture simply. So click on the blend amount texture slot and maybe choose floral 03 as the map. <clears throat> now where the texture is white we see our glass and where it is black the base material will show up now let's apply this blend material to our shader ball and let's check how the map this floral map is applied to our object maybe we can change the tiling to two and two and the offset maybe to something like uh, 0.5 on U maybe and something like 0.7 or 0.68 maybe on V. Now we can see how the blend material is blending those two material in the preview window. But also let's render the scene and see what we get. Okay, now we can stop the render and this is the result of our blend material. So that's about blend material and if you want to close this lesson, you can go ahead and continue to the next lesson. But uh, here I would like to work on a more complex example and uh, I'm gonna be, you know, uh, working a bit faster and uh, I assume you have some basic knowledge about different Vray maps and general uh, 3ds Max maps and I'll be using them uh, and I think it will be very, informative for you but if you are kind of just trying to learn Vray I think it would be better to actually close this lesson and maybe come back later on when you have finished the section
that would be much more useful. But uh, let's get started. Now in the frame buffer, we have this reference render and the material here is a blends material that, that combines three different materials. Uh, the base material is this yellowish metal. Uh, we have uh, a, a layer of rusty metal on top. As you can see, just the spots here and there. And finally, a layer of dust, which is barely visible. Now let me go ahead and start building this material using Vera Blend material and using obviously other Vera materials and maps. In the material editor, first we need a, a Vera material for our base yellow layer, right? So let's add that. Now for its diffuse color, obviously we need a yellow color, but instead of using a simple yellow color, I like to combine a few shades of yellow to make it a bit more realistic. For that, let's add a V-Ray color map, and V-Ray color map uh, simply lets you to define a color, right? It's very simple. For the first V-Ray color map, let's use 148 for red, 89 for green, and 5 for blue. Now let's copy this map and change its color to a bit more orange color. Maybe something like 183 for red, 64 for green, and 3 for blue. Now how we can combine these two colors here, we are going to be using a simple mix map. So let's add a mix map and connect the first V-Ray color to color 1 and the second V-Ray color to color 2. Right now, because mix amount is set to 0 in our mix map, we only get the first color. So let's use a grayscale map as the mix amount. To do that, first maybe we can add a bitmap to the active view and we can choose BW5 as the map here. And now we can connect this map to the mix amount. This way we get a combination of those two colors based on our bitmap. Now we can use this as the diffuse map of our material. But I still want to add a bit more detail and complexity to my diffuse map. So let's add a composite map. And let's connect our mix map to the first layer. Now click on this button in the composite map to add a second layer. Connect the composite map to the diffuse map. Let me just right click on the composite map preview and open a preview window and make it maybe a bit bigger so we can see all the changes that we will perform. For the second layer, I'm going to use a simple grayscale map. So double click on the circle beside layer 2 and choose beat map and select BW59 as the map. Now let me assign our main material and then see how this map is appearing on our object. Maybe we can change its tiling to something like 2 and 2. Now in the composite map, change uh, the blending mode for this layer to multiply so only the darker pixels will remain and its opacity to something like 50. Now we have combined this map with the mix map underneath it. Now let's add a third layer to our composite map. Use BW40 as the map for this layer. Change its tiling to 2 and 2. It's blending mode to addition, so only the lighter pixels will show up and its opacity to 20. Okay, so this is our final diffuse map. 
For the reflection color, as we are dealing with yellow metal, uh, I'm going to be using a very desaturated yellow color as the reflection color, maybe something like 198 for red, 168 for green, and 126 for blue. Now let me close this preview window here. Right click on the material preview and enable show background in the preview. Maybe open up a preview window from our main material so we can see what's going on. For the IR value, let's use maybe something like 3.5 and because yeah, the metals are normally having a less uh, visible Fresnel effect, that's why we are actually increasing the IR value as we discussed in our uh, viewing material lessons in the beginning of this section. And for a material like this yellow material, uh, yellow metal, obviously we don't need to increase the IR so much, something like 3.5 would be more than enough. And 0.8 for reflection glassiness maybe. And let's uh, maybe use a bitmap to control our reflection glassiness, something like Maybe BW38 should work fine. Let's also see how it would sit on the shader. I think I'm going to increase the tiling of this map to something like 2 and 2. If I come down to the maps rollout, let's set this map value to 85% so we can mix it with the reflection glassiness value. So change the BRDF type to GGX. And finally for the bump map, let's use BW57. Set its styling to two and two. And I think a bump mount something like six should just do fine. So we are done with our base material. The second material is going to be very simple and we're just trying to create a very simple kind of rusty metal here. Let's add another very material for the diffuse color. I'm going to be using a very color map, set its color to maybe 64 for red, 56 for green and 36 for blue. Copy this map and set the color for the second one as 71 for red, 37 for green, and 14 for blue. Now let me add a mix map. Connect the first sphere color to color one and the second one to color two. <laughs> and we can use BW22 as the mix amount here. And this is simply our diffuse map. Let's connect it to the diffuse map of our material. We want this material to be slightly reflective. So let's set its reflect color to something like 71 and a reflection glassiness to maybe 0.5. So very blurry. Also, let me use BW4 as the reflection glassiness map. But in the maps rollout, uh, decrease its effectiveness to something like 25%. Change the BRDF to GGX and IOR to 3. And for the third material, we just need to add some dust on top of everything. So let's create a simple very material. and change the diffuse color to 163, 155, and 143. It does the beige color sort of. And let me just change its roughness to 0.5. Now we have our three materials and we need to blend them using a very blend material. So let's add a very blend material. Connect the first material to the base material. Now use the second material as the first coat. And the third material as the second coat. 
<clears throat> right now the final material is a combination of all of these three materials. To make the layout a bit cleaner, one of the commands that I use is hiding unused node slots. So if you select all of the maps and materials and right click on one of them, you can hide unused node slots and make the whole thing a bit cleaner. And the shortcut is H by the way for these commands and I'm using it all the time. Now obviously we need to combine all of these three materials to achieve our final result. For the blend amount of the first coat material, I'm going to be using a composite map. So let's add one. For the first layer, we can use a Vray curvature node. And this node is a very useful tool, which basically works based on the concave and convex areas of the mesh. So the convex parts will be white and the concave parts will be black. Let me just quickly show you how it works. Let's just create a very material and use this curvature node as the diffuse map. Apply the material to your object. And render the scene. So you can see the result in the render and simply convex parts are white and the concave areas are uh, more of a black and we'll be discussing this map later on in detail. In the curvature node set the sample spread to 0.4 to basically tighten the effect and set the scale to 2 which kind of makes the effect more pronounced. For the second layer of the composite map let's use um, BW18 and set the blending mode to subtract. Now if you render the scene, uh, you can see basically the second layer is breaking up our perfect curvature map and makes it a bit more realistic. <clears throat> and for the third layer, I'm gonna be using BW7. Let's set its blending mode to addition so we can get rid of the black parts of the map. Now if I render the scene, we get this black and white texture that we are going to be using as the blend amount for our first coat material. Uh, where it's white, the coat material will show and where it's black, the base material will be used. Let me just stop the render here. Maybe you can delete this dummy material that we just used to see how the map works. Now connect this composite map to the blend amount one. And for the second blend amount for our second coat material, which is our dust material, let's make it simple and use BW39. And maybe set the tiling to something like three and three. Now we can assign this blend material to our shader ball and render the scene. This is our final render. And as you can see, we get this beautiful material, which is a combination of three materials blended together with a V-Ray blend material. In this lesson, we learned about V-Ray blend material and I will see you in the next one.